Uh, what the fuck was that? Heath, that was the ad, dude. We we do ads now. Wait, what? That's bullshit. Nobody told me we were selling out, like, fucking sellouts. No, we did tell you. Dude, we had two announcements on the air. We asked everybody on Facebook and Patreon. We, we literally had a 100% positive response. Well, I'm not on Facebook, and nobody told me on my space, so... Oh, oh, okay, pin in that. But but you know you can still get the like the, the ad-free version... Uh, early if, if, if you go to patreon.com and, and, and support the show. I don't know what that is. You guys are sellouts. Used to be awesome, but now you're just in it for the money. I don't want to pay for the show. Dude, nobody is asking you to pay for the show. The show is no. still 100% free for hundreds of thousands of people, but patrons get the sometimes extended commercial free edition and they get it early. Well, I don't want to have to listen to it on pantomime i want to listen on my phone like i always do well that's that's no problem because patreon just added an audio rss feed option which means that as of this week you'll be able to listen to it the way you always have on any podcast player commercial free and early okay well why the fuck haven't you guys done a skeptocrat it's coming back in october for the debates big premiere and then through election season just like we promised okay do you, do you feel better now yeah, yeah. Um, does the RSS food work with a Walkman? Oh, for fuck's sake. Let's just tell him yes. <laughs> I just got a new Walkman. <laughs> Upgraded to the disc, man. Got the bass, bass boost. boost. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Andrew Torres, legal counsel for Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC, the parent company that owns and produces god-awful movies. If you're a regular listener to the show, you know that Eli likes to make outrageous jokes in the form of statements like, Carly Fiorina killed her daughter. But if you haven't, you might be slightly misled by some repeated statements about criminal behavior by the Cristiano brothers in the show that follows. So let's be clear. Nobody at Puzzle in a Thunderstorm thinks that the Cristiano brothers have committed any crimes. Enjoy the show. Excuse me, I walked into the bathroom and I noticed that there was a sign there. Women who have their estrus are not instructed to leave the village. (laughs) Do you not have a giant cup that you make them wear? Sort of a half diaper, half hatchery? (laughs) Trying to figure out this whole future thing. Where do you go to church? That's all I'm curious about. I'm a science teacher. Yeah, right. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if it turns out we're wrong, we want to be acclimated to hell. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. To the present. (laughs) Very exciting. Money! Money! You gotta believe in Jesus, money! (laughs) Money! Oh, early and often will be the Back to the Future references this week. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm pretty good. I don't have the rickets. I don't know if anyone's mentioned how great it is not to have the rickets. I'm going to bring that up a couple times. <laughs> oh, if only we could go back in time to 2001 when they were writing this script and, and, and tell them about the fact that we eventually cured the rickets. So <laughs> as, as though we haven't told us, uh, told them enough, tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched Time Changer. It's... uh about a seminary professor from the late 1800s who uses a solar powered time machine <laughs> and does not use it to kill Hitler. <laughs> no. Um, nope. No. Nope. Instead, he uses it to teach an extremely immoral morality lesson about Jesus to some dude he works with. They that's how they use a time machine for 99 minutes in this movie. <laughs> who already believes in Jesus. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. And Eli how bad was this movie? 
Well, if you love time travel movies, but you hate the stakes, then you <laughs> will love this movie. This is the movie version of using a teleporter to go home and get your keys. <laughs> we, and look, the rest of this movie, there's going to be about 20 minutes of us explaining the, con the conceit of this movie. And it's one sentence. Guy goes into the future to realize that they don't have enough Jesus, comes back, realizes that Jesus is super important. And the rest of this movie, for me, was just watching a man not... Not learn anything from the future except they let girls show their tits nowadays. What the fuck's <laughs> going on? <laughs> That's pretty much it. And no, okay, so I told you yesterday, because you were running a little late, we had a birthday party for, for Eli on Friday, right before we recorded and everything, and I told you last night, I was like, this was the easiest to get through movie that I feel like we've ever watched. Did you find that to be true? Yes, absolutely. It's like walking through a haunted house. You can power through a haunted house because each room is new and exciting and a different kind of horror. And that's what this movie was. <laughs> each time you turn around, there's a new level of, I can't believe this is what they think a time travel movie is, greeting you at the next door. <laughs> Oh, God, I had so much fun with this one because it was actually like, you know, it it was paced like a movie more or less. It was shot like a movie. There were real actors here and there and, and, and stuff like that. But then just what was actually happening on screen was so bizarre that I was never at a loss for notes. Yeah. Um, so is, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? So I'm going to start with the obvious one. Can we go with worst use of time travel? We're going to talk about that <laughs> quite a bit, I think. <laughs> the use of time travel in this movie is to convince a man who already believes that Jesus Christ is his savior <laughs> and that Christianity is super dupes important to think that not only can you be moral, but you can only be moral because of Jesus. That is the sole use for a time machine in this movie, except, spoiler alert, at the very end, yeah. when he attempts to send a Bible into the end times. Yes. <laughs> Those are the two uses he came up with with a fucking time machine. Fantastic. You, uh, yeah, yeah. Quite amazing. And Heath, anything you got? Uh, I'm going to say best worst understanding of what things are are modern things <laughs> it's, it's crazy about half this movie is that like nonsense crocodile dundee thing yeah, right about right. a guy who travels 100 years in the future but when he gets there he's fascinated by like running water and like <laughs> it's so stupid <laughs> And I have to say, and we're, we'll get to this particularly at the beginning of Act 3, but this one I want to nominate for being the best at sucking its own dick. I have never Ooh. seen a movie suck its own dick before, but this one gets balls to chin. So, like, cause basically, ultimately, this entire movie is about how important this movie is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird to get meta and not get it. It's weird to, to break the fourth wall and turn around and be like, we're nailing this. <laughs> we're nailing this. If I showed up in your car right now as you listen to the podcast and I popped up and I was like, funny, aren't I? That would be a weird thing for me to do. Don't look around. I'm not there. I'm not there. You live in Texas. I'm not going there. I'm not going to your state. Or are we? Or am I? Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah. So, well, and we also, might eventually, I, I have like... to say, just a secondary one, most randomly motivated villains in the history of film. <laughs> yeah. This is... There's well, no reason for any well of Well motivated, to but weirdest actions. Like, it, there's definitely moments where you're like, oh, okay, I can see why a normal person would be concerned by that. And it's like, hey, man, that guy over there keeps throwing a brick at that window. What do you want to do? R rape him? Yeah, let's go rape him. Let's go rape him. <laughs> like, wait, wait, no, 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 no. There are ways to react to irregular behavior, but you're not doing it. That's not how <laughs> one addresses a suspicious person. Oh, this movie was amazing. 1890s I'm Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know at least a couple of listeners have been waiting for over a year for us to break this one down, so we'll keep the break brief, and when we come back, we'll dig into all the parochial tunnel vision of Time Changers. The Cristiano Brothers raped a girl in 1989. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, try it again. It's not... Fuck, okay. Didn't, didn't do it. Wait, uh, what are you guys doing? Oh, well, after watching this week's movie, me and Heath were thinking, and we invented a time machine. Nope, still not. It, oh, really? It no, it's, Damn. Not, it's calibrated wrong or something. Okay. Wait, you invented a, a 
time machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uses light sonogram information, succubus. What? Ah, still no. It's not. You are There's... kidding me. Dude, I, I don't know what, what the thing I'm telling you, though. We got to get this happening. They, they have one of those that, like, teaches you all language and knowledge, but I tried to fuck it, and everyone freaked out at me. It was like a whole thing. We get, Just try it. Try, try it one sounds one. like a nightmare. Keep going. Keep going. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Wait, what was that? What, what are you guys looking for? And, I, I mean, what have you found? Oh, nothing yet. Like, just some boring science shit. He grabbed a copy of War Room 3, though. Uh, it's in Spanish. Spanish gets, like, super popular, I guess. War Room 3? Uh, okay, wait, what are you guys looking for? Found them, dude! Finally! <laughs> oh. Okay, do they make them in Asian? Dude, in 3024, there's a new race way hotter than Asian, and they make them in that. Oh, the no best. way! Okay, move over, move over. Okay, both of us. Three, two, one. They went into the future for fuckable robots, didn't they? Fuckable robots. God damn it. Well, oh man, Shaq is going to be in War Room 3? That's too bad. I liked Shaq. And we're back for the breakdown of yet another film from the men who put the Anos back in Christianos. And we're going to start they this They shot one JFK. <laughs> <laughs> And they raped a girl in 1989. No, they didn't. Well, they may have. I mean, these are like this. It, it's been alleged. I have done sufficient research <laughs> it's, to it's, believe it's, they raped a girl in 1989. It's been alleged by a number of podcasters. Heath, quick, back me up. They used a DeLorean to rape her in 1989. <laughs> So, so we're going to start this flick off with a title sequence that made me think of the crappy live action serial that announced that Saturday morning cartoons were over. And it probably would have been called Time Changer, too. <laughs> also, by the way, I'm terrified of the Cristiano brothers. My two biggest fears are religious people and male twins. These guys are literally my nightmare. I do not. I <laughs> One threesome gone wrong and Heath has a very specific set of fears. <laughs> <laughs> Although I got to admit. I was so relieved after the last couple of movies to see credits that weren't made in After Effects or <laughs> IDVD that I was like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> I'm sorry, am I watching The Godfather? Yeah. I think I turned on the wrong movie. Also, also they had like real-ish music. My music note here is, fuck you, god-awful movies. We spent money on real instruments this time. <laughs> yeah. Really... Well, mine was it. just that the movie was taken, or the uh, music rather, was taking itself way too seriously. And that it will continue throughout the film. This is one severely overscored flick. But yeah, compared to what we normally deal with, it's fucking Mozart. Oh, I would pay all the money in the world to watch the Cristiano brothers lie to the real orchestra they paid to do the movie for this. Like, <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, totally. We can do that. Uh, what's the movie about? Time travel. Time travel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how come I haven't seen any other movies? Can you list them? I can't off the top of my head. <laughs> Your movies? You can't list them? Nope. <laughs> no, I can't because I raped a girl in 1989. Oh, Jesus <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> so now we're going to we're going to start the movie off with the uh, subtitle The Year 1890. Not the number. 1000. No, Jeff specify We're talking about Thanks. a year the here year. people. Got it. Okay. <laughs> dumbed it down for all the uh, all the folks are watching and we're watching we're going to start off on the innocence twins playing marbles in the yard in yeah. like bellhop suits yeah. <laughs> these kids are wearing more articles of clothing than i own in my entire <laughs> so many layers take off your outer vest wow right. and i know this is a movie thing but man could this not be any less 1890 they look look at that house huh <laughs> with this yeah. <laughs> Aluminum siding. So, and so, it's very visible generator at the back. So, okay, so in, in the IMDB page for this, there is one item listed under the trivia, and it's that those are three actual old houses. Oh, there's actually That's two it. items <laughs> listed under the trivia, Noah. You must oh, have missed this oh, one. Is the there second a... one is that the Cristiano Brothers <laughs> owns its own 1989. <laughs> I should mention that I, I threatened to take that out uh, <laughs> on the advice of my lawyer after we recorded the A segment, and Eli's like, no, oh, no, the fuck you won't, or there just won't be an episode, apparently. Andrew's going to go in and redact so much of this with beeps. <laughs> it's, it's just going to be, be like beeps. half beeps. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't hear this week's episode, guys. I was real <laughs> professional. <laughs> so... So the kids are playing marbles, and then Oliver Twist sneaks up to steal a couple of them. 
Yeah. And we can tell this is Roger. Yeah. And Roger is the poor kid of the neighborhood. And we can tell Roger's poor because he has a single smudge of brown dirt on his right cheek. (laughs) Yes. Done. Chimney sweep. And when he's sneaking up on the kids, I just wrote in my notes, this was this blonde kid's first kill. I like that we're getting the beginning of his story. (laughs) (laughs) But unfortunately, he just swipes a bunch of marbles and runs off and bearded derby man catches him. Yeah. Um, this will be our hero. Mm. And this is, uh, this is Carlisle, right? Yeah. So Carlisle, for you need it, he has a baby face and a Lincoln beard. I call him alternatively Babe Lincoln and a ventriloquist <laughs> dummy of an Amish person throughout this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're looking for a description. And I, I, I can't possibly do it justice, but the, the 1890s speak lines in this movie, <laughs> it, it's fucking hilarious throughout. They just randomly don't use oh, contractions. They break or whatever. into Shakespeare and then like Latin. It's, it's, it makes, right. They have no idea when 1890 was. <laughs> Second only to my Australian accent in realism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are we here it. in 1890, bro? Are we in fucking 1890 right now? Are we in fucking 1890? Are out in 1890? Oh, crazy billionaire remake of this movie already. I want Mark. Wahlberg to play all the characters. <laughs> it's a Mark Wahlberg one man show. We mount it off Broadway. We can make this happen. I got Go fund me <laughs> forward slash Mark Wahlberg time tremors. I gotta tell you, this movie has moved to the top of my list of movies to crazy billionaire money. Oh, it's so easy too. Yeah, right. For a lot of reasons. <laughs> so yeah, so he, he scolds this little kid, tells him not to, uh, uh, play marbles. And then we cut to a dead man in a chair. Uh, okay. Well, uh, he's sleeping, but he looks dead at first. He's dead. Yeah. Captain Steubing. Yeah, Captain Steubing. It's Captain Steubing. From, uh, from Gavin McLeod. Yeah. Yep. And now we get what I think we can all agree is the most riveting scene, not just in this movie, <laughs> but in all of cinema, <laughs> which is the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen <laughs> talking about whether or not they're going to blurb the back of a book. <laughs> yep. Yes. The, the whole scene is crazy. It looks like... Dogs dressed as former presidents playing poker. <laughs> like, that, that's approximately what's happening exactly. if you just look at it. And they spend 20 minutes oh, explaining for- the process by which Grace Bible College blurbs a book. It's like, if you want to blurb, it's trial by combat. <laughs> <laughs> Except for nothing interesting, right? You know, no. it's, yeah, exactly. It's like if fucking Thunderdome had just been bureaucratic. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it, it, we get, and, and it's, it's literally, it's like the, uh, it's like the opening scene of Reservoir Dogs if they didn't have anything to talk about. You know, if they were all just sitting there going, uh, so how's the, uh, how are the fries? I didn't, yeah. I should have got fries <laughs> instead of the slaw. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's before Mr. Pink showed up, them just being like, oh, I should get a salad. No, I mean, I, I don't, I like, I, I don't want to be a guy who diets, but at the same time, it's like I'm getting older and I can see my body changing. Look at me talking about food, huh? <laughs> Were they supposed to be here at two or two thirty? I'm, I'm, I'm not mad. Like they're only ten minutes late at two. I just want to know. Is it rude to order without them? <laughs> and they, they all look like like the world's first team of hipster bartenders. With the <laughs> like, like they should be yelling about garnishes on Saloon Rescue. It's, it's, yeah. Gentlemen, we don't make mojitos. <laughs> it's decided. <laughs> Click. That's- yeah, so they're they're talking about writing a blurb on uh, uh, Carlisle, the main character. They're, he's he's written a book, and he wants the Bible seminary that he works for to put a blurb on it. So they're talking about that, but they're also talking about that old dead guy that we saw in the chair, who is Norris, um, who some people think may be delirious now that he's been ill or whatever. And and he's apparently he's the missing extraordinary gentleman from this table. <laughs> right, right. And I'm just trying to imagine the Cristiano brothers just sitting around in a, in a writing room in the year 2000, which again is 18 years after they raped a girl uh, and <laughs> saying, what do people want to watch in a movie? And the answer was old motherfuckers complimenting a book we haven't read and isn't real. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I found it to be quite... <laughs> oh, well, I found it to be a little bit... <laughs> and they were just like, yes, write more, write more. And that's exactly how they wrote the lines, by the way. Um, yeah, it, it, and, and yeah, they chuckle between every single sentence, and everybody seems, you know, ready to go, ready to blurb the fuck out of this book, but then Norris shows up. Captain Steubing shows up unexpectedly from his illness. And doesn't seem to like the book as much as all these other yokels. 
Yeah. Well, Captain uh, Mr. Norris, Professor Norris wants to talk to um Babelham Lincoln alone. <laughs> yeah. Alone. And, and look, when someone insists on privacy that many times, you caught a disease from his penis. Go in the other room. <laughs> Absolutely. I wrote, if this conversation doesn't end with we have AIDS, then this is a very strange way to behave. <laughs> It'd be syphilis, I think, in 1890. But yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and by the way, the problem that Norris has oh, that we find out right here. For fuck's sake. The book that, that Carlisle wrote says that we should teach Christian morality to everyone, but it doesn't specify that you need to specifically have the word Jesus like literally contained in each sentence. Yep. That's that's the problem of this movie actually. Well, right, that's Norse's problem and that that is going to be the stakes of this film. Is it enough to be moral if you're not also Christian? Right. It it's basically but it's even weirder than that. It's like it's not enough just to be like stealing is wrong. You have to say stealing is wrong. Or you will melt in fire. Right, you can't right. just say. And they they take a moment where the guy's like, "What about people from other religions?" And he's like, "Fuck those assholes." <laughs> Got it. Sounds good. It's eighteen ninety. We're allowed to say that. Yeah. Good thing it's not two thousand and one. We should know better. <laughs> There's also a fantastic moment in this conversation where he vaguely intimates that it's plagiarism not to quote all moral ideas as having belonged to god like we always when we say to be or not to be we quote shakespeare so when i'm like stop fucking that cantaloupe eli i have to say <laughs> hashtag that was god right <laughs> right and, and like not ibid you can't just keep saying ibid like, <laughs> jesus say out the footnote <laughs> That's and, that's the problem. Of and this movie. look, we are not exaggerating at all. At one point in this conversation, the guy even says it would be better not to tell a child that it's wrong to steal than to tell him it's wrong to steal without telling him it's because it would make Jesus cry. Right. Because he, if you never give a child any moral lessons and they find Jesus, it's better than if you raise a good person who doesn't find Jesus. That is the real serious argument of this fucking movie. Absolutely. And this is what we're going to employ time travel to prove. <sighs> I, yeah. They, and, and these people look, they cannot even sound reasonable in their own fucking movies. Even when you place this in the 1890s in a Bible seminary, you have to have the characters sitting around going, I don't know, Norris, that sounds kind of stupid to me. <laughs> yeah. Here's an actual quote. A man can have good morals his whole life. But I think we all know he goes to hell when he dies. Yes. That's the good guy in this movie says that in minute eight. That's yeah. the premise yeah. of this movie. And, and then the movie proves that premise, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, which makes Jesus the bad guy in this fucking movie. Um, so yeah, and, and, and then they start quote, he starts quoting all his little worlds going to shit statistics in the imaginary 1890s. And then I guess Hannibal Lecter in a goatee adjourns the meeting until they can sort out Norris's issues with the book. Um, so now we cut to basically the same goddamn scene at one, um, cause now we've got, uh, Carlisle, uh, in his, in his classroom, finishing up from class, and Norris comes in and he's like, hey, you go, you wanna talk like we did in the last scene and we'll do in the next scene? <laughs> right. And basically, we get to watch this character enact every time your girlfriend's mad at you but doesn't want to talk about it. Just like, are you mad? No, I'm not mad. Do you want to talk about it? I don't want to talk about it. So then you're mad. No, I don't want to talk about it and I'm not mad. <laughs> Come over You're later. just so mean to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing is that Norris wants uh, 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 Carlisle to come to his house. You know, he's he's like, no, I have an issue with your book and you have to come to my house to understand what it is. You must come to my house. <laughs> you must <laughs> yeah. come to my house. You have to see what my daughter can do with a candelabra. <laughs> I could describe it to you here, but you'll think I'm shitting you. Just come to my house. And multiple times, this is going to happen in multiple scenes, but this is the first time it happens. The character turns to him and goes, and if I don't come? And the other character is like, uh, the, come though. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> right. You have to. You I wrote must. My notes, I'll it... fucking find you. <laughs> those, yeah, those are his real words. You must. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, why can't we just keep talking about it right now? We're here talking about it in this same room. It's 1890. Yeah, I need right. to take like a three day steamship to get to your house. <laughs> Can we just? No, it has to be my house. Yeah. Get on the riverboat. Nice. Bring oranges. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you why, but I have a tip from the future. Oranges are important. <laughs> 
And 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 so it, the movie could just get going from here, right? He could just go to this guy's house and we could start the fucking movie. But instead, we're going to dilly-dally around for a good 25 fucking minutes while we decide whether or not we're going to go to this guy's house where he's got his fucking time machine. So instead, now we're going to cut to Russell talking with that dude from Office Space. Um, yeah, Teddy Roosevelt, inventor of the jump to conclusions map. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Yep. Uh, although the advantage here is we also in this scene get to meet his wife. Oh yeah. And I'm convinced that at some point in this movie they needed a Cochin chicken, but instead they just decided to have the Cochin chicken play his wife. <laughs> She's literally little grouse on the prairie. <laughs> I think that's Gavin McLeod's wife actually, or one one of the characters is. Really? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so he he chats with the office of space guy, and then we go to his house where he like you know he bitches at his wife about Norris being such a dick, and comes to the conclusion that perhaps Norris is just insane. Which he, spoiler alert, he is. Yeah, in any movie but this one, he is <laughs> exactly. No, no, I can send you to the future to learn about tits. Um. So, yeah, so he decides to go to the Dean because fuck Norris. He doesn't want to go to his house. He wants to go over Norris's head and get an exception to the rule that says, you know, whatever, that all the people have to agree before they can blurb a book. Yeah. So just just to reiterate, the central conflict of this plot is based on the idea that people won't buy theology books in 1890 unless they have the Grace Bible Seminary seal of approval endorsement on the back. That's yeah. and, and and we're supposed to like really give a fuck about that. Well, to be fair, he had to journey to the bottom of the sea to be on the featured list on Barnes and Noble's website, so it was a whole fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> so now, and I love this bit too because he's talking to the dean, and the dean's like, "No, no, no, you, it, the unanim, unanimity rule is is important or whatever." And he's like, "Well, what 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 if Norris is insane? Did you ever think of that?" And then the dean just like kind of goes off the fucking rails. How dare you? He took the loveliest shit on the floor right here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Told me it would keep the demons away. <laughs> <laughs> and there haven't been any demons. Right. So, but, but, so the dean kicks him out, but then we get a really quick scene where the office space guy is, is saying, well, you know what? If a 75% majority can override any policy, so let's try that. So then we cut immediately back to the dean while he suggests that instead of him just suggesting it while he was already in the scene with the goddamn dean. Well, they promised Wilford Brimley Jr. two scenes in the movie, and he was going to get those two scenes. It actually wasn't for the money. He did the second day for free. It was for the craft services. (laughs) Mike Holmgren can't get a job in the NFL at the moment. He needed some time. (laughs) So, yeah. So he takes this proposal to the dean, which is apparently easier than going to this dude's house. Um, And he doesn't like the idea, but, you know, he doesn't have any choice. The dean does, I guess. And then, of course, we have to go back to the house more so that he can bitch to his wife again so that this movie can take longer to start yeah exactly this is the this is like if there had been four scenes at the beginning of back to the future where marty argued with his mom about whether or not he should go help out doc on saturday night they are totally meaningless scenes just like i don't know mom doc's a little weird well think about it we watch him go to sleep wake up i've still been thinking about whether or not i should go help out doc i mean i'm really falling behind at school well that's up to you marty seven (laughs) scenes later all right doc what do you need help with plutonium marty (laughs) (laughs) yeah it well, it, it's it's very clear that they just didn't have a movie's worth of movie here, so they had to drag this fucking opening out. So now we get him. He finally goes to see Norris, who wants him to look in his barn as if this wasn't creepy enough. Yeah. I, and I wrote in my notes, I want him to have a Filipino boy chained up in his barn so bad. <laughs> Literally, as he's walking in there, he goes, you never met my father before he died, but this is where I keep his body. He's Come, right. on. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to make you eat a part of him. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure there was going to be a cask of Amontillado in there somewhere. Yeah, but uh... I just wanted him to get run over by a DeLorean and credits. <laughs> That's right. Flies in. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. And they just back the DeLorean back out and the movie's over. It's your kids, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner's in trouble. <laughs> They killed someone with a car, and so did she. She's a murderer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Equally a good driver. Yeah. <laughs> At least they didn't rape anybody in 1989. So, um, <laughs> women drivers, am I right? <laughs> Space time continuum. That's what happens? <laughs> I'll get you every time. So he goes into the barn, and 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 as he's going in the barn, uh, Captain Steubing is explaining that um, his dad was an inventor, and they invented a time machine together. 
And I love this moment here where he tells him, he's, he's like, you know, what is that? And we're looking at this like steampunky time machine thing. And he goes, these are the exact words. It's a singularity chrono displacement device. And I'm writing in my notes, it's a uh, science word omatic. That's exactly what I wrote. It's a science word. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a science word. <laughs> And this is where I want Billy Pilgrim to show up and just beat the shit out of all of them. <laughs> There you go. I got unstuck, idiots. See? <laughs> <laughs> Assholes. Yeah, eventually we want the Terminator capacitor. to show God up. God damn it. And, yeah, right. And, and they, so he explains, hey, I went forward in time and the guy's like, oh, did you, uh, did you bring back any future technology like vaccines or, you know, super fast cars or hospitals or sanitization? And he's like, no, no, no. Um, things, can't go back in time, but they can go f- forward cause and cause. then and then come back and yeah right they 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 have this really just ham fisted effort to to make the whole fact that he doesn't have an iPhone make sense. I'm not I'm not improvising this. Uh, there this was all written in the script there, <laughs> there because <were> lines. <laughs> they didn't exist yet. Even though I don't exist yet in the future, so the <laughs> not existing thing would probably be a problem in both. Dra- There's a reason I didn't bring back any vaccines. I didn't bring back any vaccines because I couldn't, not because Jesus is more important. <laughs> I also but couldn't learn though. how they were. Never mind. Never mind. You know what? Never mind. Um, Just getting we- the time shackles. I mean, uh, time. <laughs> <machine>. <laughs> And the fight they have is so funny. He's like, seriously, let me shoot you with this giant laser steampunk time machine and send you in the future. And he's like, no, don't be a dick. Just let me do it. No, it, like, <laughs> might as well be chasing him around with his dick. It's like the same conversation. <laughs> it's like your older brother. I'm not going to shoot you with a time laser hard. Just I'll let you get me twice after I get you the first time. <laughs> right. And then, of course, Russell gets in the time machine and the movie starts. Oh, wait. No, he fucking doesn't. We're going to worry about the blurb for another 15 minutes. So he leaves because this movie needs to take its time, warm us up for the time travel. So now instead we cut to the next day where Russell is teaching class. Right. And he's explaining to his students who are all dressed like Ichabod Crane. (laughs) Students, remember, (laughs) make sure that your science matches up with the scripture. Because the best way to be a good scientist is to match your science to the scripture I'm, this is good advice. <laughs> oh, we should put this in the movie. Script note, no guys, take this out of the movie. I'm not shooting it this way. <laughs> Don't say this out loud. Waving at you. Waving at you. <laughs> Alan, stop talking. <laughs> Who put this in his script? We very clearly told him not to memorize that. <laughs> Did you hide the body? We raped a girl in 1980. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, th- th- this is the exact line. He says, remember, kids, scientific or scientific findings don't make the Bible true. Scripture needs no ver- verification. I'm like, I could do an entire episode on that throwaway line. <laughs> they just need to establish he was teaching a thing in a class, and that's what they went with. Wow. Unfucking real And then, of course, Norris comes to see him after class because, you know, one Norris coming to see him in his classroom and having an aborted conversation scene is never enough. Yeah. He comes in and reminds him, hey, I'm really expecting you at 8. And he's like, I'm not going to be there. And he's like, I'll see you tonight at 8. <laughs> like dating an Italian guy, this movie. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and then we get uh, Dr. Wiseman, the the, the um, office space guy, coming to tell him that all the other professors agree that Norris is being a duty head. So they want to change the policy because this matters. Um, but it might be too late because the, you know, whatever, the publisher needs this book now before Jesus goes out of style forever. Yeah, the publisher's daughter is kidnapped and a book about I, Jesus was the kidnapping <laughs> apparently. demand, apparently. Yes. <laughs> By tomorrow, damn it. Well, if I mail it to you, it'll take eight months and four of the people I send to bring it to you will die. So. <laughs> And and then we go to the future. No, we go to his fucking house and watch him read literally. Yeah, because that's how this goddamn movie works. And and, and what he we sit there and watch him read for a second, and then he starts having flashbacks to the last scene. Mm-hmm. I mean, all Christian movies flash back to themselves quite often, but to the last, we're twenty four minutes in, and we're flashing back to two minutes earlier. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm still waiting for the Christian movie that flashes back to the scene we're in currently. <laughs> <laughs> Also, by the way, they show a newspaper yeah, at this point uh-huh. to be like, oh, look, it's 89. In the newspaper he's reading from 1890, 
There's literally a story about a TV station covering a live debate. <laughs> you got seriously? Giants win four to three. <laughs> Dan Snyder write about it at this time. <laughs> yeah, those are all the right same sports. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess a football score could be four three. That that makes sense. The fact that I matched up sports is a miracle. Giants are actually playing Dan Snyder's team uh, this week. So I yeah, you that. nailed it. You nailed it. Yeah, well, my wait. fantasy league's doing really well. Way to sports, bro. I <laughs> fantasize that people let me play fantasy. <laughs> It's like a double fantasy. So, <laughs> what? I won it. again. Oh, see you on the chat board. <laughs> <laughs> so now finally, fucking Carlisle goes to see Norris so he can travel through goddamn time and this stupid fucking movie can start. And, well, and, and not even that, because at this point, Norris, uh, 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 Carlisle is still desperately trying to deny the plot. You know, he's walking around like revving up the time machine and the dude's going, no, 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 we're not, I'm not going. Yeah. He's just ignoring everything that's being said and just getting the time machine ready while the guy's like, no, I'm not clearly not doing this. <laughs> it's like Lois talking to Stewie, but in reverse. <laughs> yeah. He's being strapped into an electric chair. He's just like, I don't know. I want you to know I'm strongly against this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll put the sponge in my mouth, but I want you to know that this is not going to happen. <laughs> Meanwhile, his friend, without warning him, is about to send him in the future. And he's like, Hey, I'm going to send you into this alley. Ask for bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love here too. Cause you know, obviously look, anytime you introduce time travel to a movie, you fuck shit up. You're right. You're just inviting in all of these paradoxes and shit like that. But at one point, the guy says, you're going to the future, but I can't go with you. I haven't figured out how to allow the time machine to let two people go at once. And I'm like, well, then go before or after to the or, same time. Or build, Why build another time machine? There's <laughs> there's know. multiple ways this could be handled. But yeah, anyway. So, oh, and they also I love the, the moment where they decide, you know, we should probably explain the science of this time machine. It literally is like, oh, in case you were wondering, this is solar powered. <laughs> <laughs> Solar what? power? There's no way you're getting 1.21 gigawatts from right? 1890s solar <laughs> panels. I jumped forward and watched a reboot of uh, Star Wars that happens after the good ones, and it turns out you just need to suck all that power out of a sun, and then you can laser beam it at your friend, and he goes into the future, but then the laser beams come back for him exactly four days later. Don't worry about it. Bye-bye! <laughs> Just make sure you have three metal grill tops spinning like modern art for no reason in there. That's, you're going to need that. I got to say, though, I do want to kind of I kind of want to do a room in steampunk time machine. Now, I did really like this set. <laughs> this is why we put ads in the show. <laughs> No wandering around a steampunk room. Yeah. Actually, it's for retainers for the, uh, the accusations of rape in 1989. But, uh. I'm on a Zeppelin. <laughs> watching the Cristiano brothers rape someone far, far below. <laughs> also, just one other thing about this time machine. You got to picture this. There's very clearly three different, uh, steampunk penis pumps. Yes. Pointing yes! at this guy's face. Those are the time lasers <laughs> what? and he's just standing there with with giant fucking laser dicks pointed at his face going no no i don't want to do this whatsoever <laughs> but yeah, yeah i wanted so badly for him to just turn into dust and for norris to be like ha got it. <laughs> oh jesus <laughs> which was a lot more likely that he just invented a laser and melts a guy he disagrees yeah. with <laughs> Would have been a great movie in that sense. Yeah. Or in that case. Yeah. So, and then, okay. So, but before he zaps him into the future, he gives him a handful of coins so he can sell them in the future. So he'll have money. Um, and he recommends a good librarian and then he hits the flux capacitor. Yeah. Yep. And he gets zapped into the future. Why not just tell him when the Cubs are going to win the World Series or that something was, like that? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, no, that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> this is 2001. How many of the Cubs believe in Jesus? So, <laughs> that's the important question, yeah. So, now it's now, and Russell emerges behind some dumpster yelling for Norris. And I wrote in my notes, please be naked Terminator style. Please be naked Terminator <laughs> style. But no, he's all dressed in his old-timey clothes. Yeah. And here's a weird moment. He opens his pocket watch... And I wrote in my notes, damn, no year setting on my pocket watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but instead he sees a newspaper because that's how time travel movies transmit the date. Mm. It's the last time you read a fucking newspaper. Anyway, so, yeah, so then he, I guess he s timidly sets out to explore the modern world. 
Um, to it, sneaky music. You don't need to sneak around. We still have human people <laughs> in the 2000s. They're going to have a lot of trouble with this throughout. <laughs> yeah, knowing what he should and shouldn't be freaked out by. But first, he's going to go to an old coin store so he can see him selling the coin. We can't just intuit that. Which he has no problem finding. This is a man who will later be confused <laughs> by every single object he comes across. But he's like, excuse me, a rare coin dealer, like 1880s, 1890s, I would say early, like turn of the century. And she's like, oh, yeah, right around the corner on Stuyvesant. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, next next to Bob's Antiques? Yeah, it's actually in Bob's Antiques. Okay, great. Just like zoop. Again, for the rest of this movie, he will be fascinated by how a van door opens, but he finds the <laughs> rare coin dealer, no fucking problem. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, so he goes in and he sells his coin and he thanks him for treating him in such a fair and Christian manner. <laughs> and, and the coin gallery guys like wink and elbow each other. Yeah. Guarantee you, first draft of the script, they had yarmulkes. Guarantee. <laughs> Scratched out by the non-Christian who helped make this movie with them. No. No. Okay, what if they just have the little uh, curly fries? What if they just have the curly fry hair? No, and, and we talked about not saying that. Dollar in the Judaism drawer. <laughs> You're going to buy everybody on the crew pizza by the end of this. Yeah. <laughs> Dave. And Okay, so now we, we get him checking into his, his hotel now that he's got some money. And I love, okay, so the, 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 the bellboy brings him in and explains to him how TVs work. Well, you know, like people do at the hotels. They're like, yeah, you can, you can use this television with this remote, you know, just so that we can get him going, television? Uh, remote you know but but why the fuck would anyone if they didn't suspect you were from 1890 why would anyone yeah. tell you the remote works with the television yeah they'd just be like here's your room bye but instead <laughs> i'm like he's like so here's your bed uh which fits two people you can sleep in it, this it's horizontal it's not vertical like you guys used to have in 18 i mean just it's it's a flat <laughs> what? See, I think the bellboy was trying to fuck him. He was like, oh my gosh, my shift just ended and here I am in your hotel room. <laughs> it may have been it. With these pants that just fall right off <laughs> <laughs> at the slightest tug. <laughs> but instead, All right. he's, <laughs> but instead he's going for the tip and we get the scene where like he's holding out his hand and, 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 and Russell is too old timey. Carlisle is too old timey. So he doesn't get it. So he shakes his hand instead. Did they not have tipping? Isn't tipping uh, a thing that we've yes, had for yes. longer than that? What? Absolutely. It goes back to like Tudor England, according to Wikipedia or whatever. So yes, tipping is older than the United States by a lot. I think because he was of a different race, he assumed that that was a manservant slave. Oh, I stunk. <laughs> yeah. I assumed he was going to go back to his quarters. One thing that this movie lacks, a tremendous amount of racism, which an 1890s character would almost certainly have. Right, right. right. Well, that's why I want a crazy billionaire money this movie so much, you know, like to give it the same fucking plot, but treat it like it would actually go. Just so every time he encounters a black character, boy, get off the street. <laughs> <laughs> beats all the women that talk back to him and shit yeah it'd be good um so it, it, so it, and then he goes out for an early evening on the town so we can get more of the crocodile dundee comedy because he doesn't know how walking works yeah, music note and now carlisle gets into a dance battle <laughs> just added to this, my, my, just my introduction to this scene and the notes is just okay and then the black exploitation music starts yeah. <laughs> my music note here was future jazz from 30 years ago again they are so confused by time here <laughs> also it's really important to point out that this man of science asks no questions and makes no attempt to make the world a better place. He's just like, oh, demon truck, demon, I will get, get the fuck away. He encounters like a motorized car at one point, like a little remote control car, <laughs> yeah. and he just, he just, yeah, out! Power of Christ compels you. Like, there's, there's no one you would send into the future less curious or interested yep. in the world around them. He's just upset <laughs> at the future. Right. And why is there a remote control truck in the middle of this street? Like, some kid's going like, hey, look, Guy from 1890. I'm going to fuck with him. <laughs> Driving it around in the middle of a street. What? <laughs> Damn it, Brian. Fuck you. <laughs> well, I also love the part where he, like, he comes up to the water fountain and he's so fascinated. And I'm like, drinking fountains were invented in 1896. He's like, literally, he's marveling over like the next decades. He goes to 2002 to marvel at shit that was invented in 1896. Irrigation technology <laughs> is fascinating. To like, look at these aqueducts. What are you talking about? To be fair, I think he's more confused about the fluoride he feels in the water. <laughs> right. He felt his third eye closing like they had an off switch. It's, 
or one guy. <laughs> I just need one guy to get that. And also, well, and, and this was a very poor uh, extras casting decision. Right before he sh- gets like freaked out about the drinking fountain, they show a little black girl using the f- getting water out of the fountain. So you can't tell if he's fascinated by the fountain or the fact that it's a miscegenated fountain. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So, I yeah. say, he calls over a cop, that colored girl just drank at my fountain. <laughs> I've seen whites drinking from it. <laughs> you must be from the South. Uh, yeah, no. I get it, man. It's 2000 and we're still used to people like you. But uh, yeah. You're not in Mississippi anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to go on the internet to say that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. You got to go on Twitter to yell it at Eli. Um and 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 also we get a scene where he's like he's all freaked out by a lamp. It, again, <laughs> light bulbs already invented in oh, yeah, 1890 and that's a famous one. <laughs> really? He, and literally there was a lamp in his house earlier. Yeah, we right. saw a light bulb. <laughs> he's fascinated by the fact that it's one of those touch lamps. Oh, I it's see. not the yeah. Oh, of all the fucking it. technology, this is the thing that they came up with, right? The Cristiano brothers are like, what's an amazing kind of technology that would really freak this guy out? And and, and, and one of them touch went, lamp. well, the touch lamp <laughs> still freaks me out a bit. I don't know how, like, I think there might be a devil in that. <sighs> <laughs> just the Cristianos freaking each other out at Halloween with a clapper, just like, okay, do it again, but then we gotta go to bed. It's almost 8 p.m. <laughs> we raped a girl in 1989. <laughs> And then we end, of course, on a literal pretty woman montage where he goes to get some future clothes. Oh, and I wanted so badly for him to have like a, uh-uh, uh-uh, that's the one moment. Yeah, right. <laughs> Walks out with his arms full of bags. He turns to like a black salesperson who didn't hold the door open for him. Big mistake. <laughs> And then we learn that my opinion of Paul Rodriguez could sink lower when Russell meets him in a laundromat. Uh, hey, guys, they got the guy from Beverly Hills Chihuahua for this movie, okay? <laughs> That's big. That's big. I'm like 90% sure the Cristianos thought this was Carlos Mencia. <laughs> Pretty sure. They were probably excited. Yeah, actually, funny, in my appearance notes, I have Paul Rodriguez looks like Carlos Mencia. <laughs> That's it. He looks like Carlos Mencia. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're not, if you haven't watched Beverly Hills Chihuahua, Jesus, we might have to break that one. Turn down this on off and episode. watch Beverly Hills Chihuahua <laughs> right now. And a little mind of Mencia. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. There, yeah, there you go. Good there show. You go. Get them side by side. So, and, and Paul's listening to the game on these crazy cool wireless headphones. And this is the first time, like, he, he bothers to be curious about anything, right? He walks up to Eddie's, the character's name, and he's like, what is this thing on your head? Um, but what he's really there, and it's, and, and I thought, okay, finally we're gonna get into the whole he's curious about the future thing, but what he's really there for is to see if fucking Eddie can recommend a good church for him. Yeah. yeah. And then, now, Noah, maybe you can help me, cause I, I know you were born in the year 1890 as well. <laughs> Eddie hands him a giant yellow book of rolling papers. <laughs> Is it is do, now in the past? Would you get high and then <laughs> someone would tell you he asked him to do something with his fingers? I don't understand. It seems like he's got a giant, it's almost like an iPhone, but if someone took it and printed it all out on condoms. I don't really understand. An analog iPhone, yeah. I love it. They they send this character to the future so he can learn how people look shit up in the past. I mean, why wouldn't he just why wouldn't you just have him have a phone and show it to him? Yeah, this movie's idea of modernity in two thousand two, the phone book. Anyway, yeah, but of course this the real thing that we have to learn here is that Eddie don't have time for no church. Um and that will be, I guess, important. Anyway. Yeah. It will not. No, no, it won't. Nothing that happens will be important <laughs> not ever at all. to any of these not characters. There's no reason for any of this to happen. <laughs> so he he finds a church to go to. So now we're going to cut it to him going to church in the modern day. And I just wrote my notes like, please let him be snake handlers. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. <laughs> now, instead, he meets the baby of what appears to be Ray Comfort and Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Hitler clone. You can't fool me. I know what a Hitler clone looks like. They teach us in Hebrew school how to look for Hitler clones. <laughs> It's like 90% Hitler clones, 10% the song you have to learn when you're 13. <laughs> it's an inside scoop. So, <laughs> I appreciate you saving me all that trouble. 
Um, so yeah, but the, but yeah, this Hitler clone is telling him all about all the cool stuff that the church do, does, and they have a movie night with the youth group, and basically he's like, okay, so we're gonna have a scene where we do a movie night, and then we're gonna have a scene where we uh, go door to door, and then we're gonna have a scene where we it basically explains the next nine scenes to him or whatever. Um, although I, he did say something about there being a sports league or whatever, and I really wanted to see fucking Carlisle playing basketball. That would have been pretty awesome. Okay, now I watched this movie very quickly, which means that I might have had a psychotic break <laughs> in this scene, but I need everyone to verify for me that what I saw happened. Are Are you talking about uh Charlton Heston staring at Russell's penis? Is that <laughs> yes. a, is that a he part? turns to his that right. happened. That did. And Charlton happen. Heston is staring at his dick and is like. Nice Bible. You gonna fuck that? <laughs> it's, it's, you ever notice how the Bibles are thin, but oh so hard to tear? What? That's literally like, what this character says. Yeah, man. <laughs> Weird. It's, 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 and, and that never comes back. No! <laughs> No. Not at all. Watch this. Uh, look, we, it's on YouTube. We don't tell you to watch all the movies. You definitely got to watch some of them. You don't need to watch this entire movie. It's a fun watch. Put it on at a party. But you absolutely need to watch this scene and understand <laughs> that it never pays off. It never comes back. I'm convinced that Cristiano's dad just wandered in covered in hooker blood and was like, well, boys, looks like it's time for daddy to do a scene. And they were like, did the voices tell you to? And he was like, sure would. You haven't noticed how the pages of a Bible or like a hit your girl's skin at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I sure do, Mr. Cristiano. Can you keep making the movie now? You can if you can answer my riddle. How many fingers am I holding up? Three and they're covered in blood and poop. The answer's three. Bye bye. <laughs> It is the most bizarre aside that we have ever seen in a fucking movie, I think. Um, yeah, there's just a weird, random serial killer character sitting on the other side of him. Um, and then we get the, uh, you know, we get a quick montage of the service where Russell's the only one singing loud and enthusiastically enough or whatever. And the preacher looks like a pig skeleton wearing Marco Rubio's toupee. <laughs> <laughs> And we get, yeah, we get a very brief excerpt of a, the Bible is awesome thing. And I guess what we're supposed to be getting from this is that Russell, uh, uh, Carlisle, his name is Russell Carlisle. I have him as Russell in, in all my notes. So Russell is looking around and seeing that people are bored, but I couldn't even tell what he was supposed to be looking around and seeing. Yeah, because we're just shot him. We don't see a bunch of people like yawning or listening to music mm -hmm. or smoking a crack pipe. It's just like it's just him, his face turning around and being upset. Yeah, right. And we're supposed to infer from that that everyone's not wrapped in the only book in town the way they would be in 1890. I guess. Yeah. I hear he's got words printed on paper up there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, but now it's time for more comedy. So we get it. We have to get Russell trying some future food. So he goes uh, to a hot dog vendor. And I don't understand. Ordering food and drinks is a thing that's been, we've had that again. Why is he confused? <laughs> right. And a hot dog, it's a fucking sausage. Like what? How hard? Like, do I put this in my face? Oh, what year is it? Balance it on my nose? No, you eat it just like all the food ever. D now, do you insert this in me, or do I insert it in you? I'm hard to, I can't tell. Your hat isn't tipped the direction that is customary. <laughs> and now, I have a question for you, gentlemen. When you want to show someone's the protagonist of a movie, and a starving child sneaks up and steals their food, what happens? Well, oh, it beats the shit out of her. I'd I have think. him chase her like a pedophile through a park, maybe. <laughs> chase like her that. down and explain to, to her that she's going to boil in fire forever, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Because <laughs> that's what happens next. This little street urchin girl, I guess, but it's about to all be negated. It's crazy. But this is what happens in order. <laughs> little girl comes up, steals his hot dog, runs away. He chases her down like the $6 million man, <laughs> right? And he's like, huh, I would have let you have that hot dog. If you were hungry, and she's like, nah, I just like stealing because no one's ever told me about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's it. You know, he literally goes, don't you know that stealing is a sin? And she goes, says who? <laughs> yeah. I wonder if a little girl would be like, well, uh, actually, Socrates was doing moral philosophy centuries before that Jesus guy that you're telling me is like the reason for this lesson. No. Which? So, yeah, right, right, exactly. She just pulls down her lower lip. She's got 666 tattooed on the bottom. <laughs> I deny the Holy Spirit runs away. Fuck. 
<laughs> it would have been just as unlikely a circumstance. And then we get, oh, I guess we have to have more comedy. So now he's going to go have a word with the department store owner about all these obscene bras on display. Well, so literally. The, the kids are checking out the mannequin's tits, which... The Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> and he comes over and very politely he's like, excuse me, so sorry to bother you. Uh, can you burn that mannequin for being a witch? <laughs> can you burn it like a witch? I'm upset by women's clothes. And to be fair, the actor who plays the like manager reacts. We work, we all worked in retail. We worked in the same retail and we all dealt with this person at least once in our career. Right, now yes. we worked in a toy store, but at one point in my career and at one point in all of our careers, someone walked up and was like, excuse me, do you know that brat dolls are of the devil? Yeah. And we did the same thing. We were like, I totally understand where you're coming from. Look over there. Is that the Olsen twins? But they're young and okay. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, 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 and again like i can't emphasize this enough because this is when it really started to dig into me it's like this movie's message is ah back when women couldn't vote and generally speaking neither could the blacks <laughs> ah rickets that's what this movie's message is like he this, this guy goes into the future and he's not like wow look at all of these fucking iron chariots moving at 80 miles an hour and shit it's it's what a what are these bras doing out here that's where this movie fucking stays the entire yeah. time ah rickets isn't the post colonic of this movie but it is the quote from a critic that they put on the front of the dvd against <laughs> the sky you know what i'm saying like right. ebert ah rickards if you put that mannequin away, I could rape a white lady. I could seriously, you, could, you, don't, you don't know what might happen. Well, and that's the thing is that he's like, uh, that's what he's telling him. He's like, don't, we, I think we all know that displaying something like that will uh, arouse impure thoughts in the youth. Like, yes, yes, that's the message. And, and again, now look, if somebody came from the 1890s and walked through a department store, they would probably go to the manager and say something like that. And that could be hilarious if you accept that that's a really stupid thing to think. Which is why it was hilarious. Well, right, but not, but not consciously. It wasn't right. consciously hilarious because this movie is going like, yeah, back in the 1890s, we had to pretend bras didn't exist or that <laughs> bras didn't exist. Uh, anyway, <laughs> when, when were bras invented? That was before 1890, I'm Excuse sure. Excuse me. I walked into the bathroom and I noticed that there was a sign there. Women who have their estrus are not instructed to leave the village. <laughs> Do you not have a giant cup that you make them wear? Sort of a half diaper, half hatchery? <laughs> trying to figure out this whole future thing. Where do you go to church? That's all I'm curious about. I'm a science teacher. Yeah, right. Yeah, so he walks away dejected because nobody else is bitching about the bras or whatever. Uh, so then he goes back to see Eddie, uh, Paul Rodriguez again, you know, to, I guess, try to elbow him into going to church. Yeah. And again, Paul Rodriguez is like, yeah, man, I'm just a, a good guy. Like, it's not how we think about goodness. In fact, it's not how, well, that little girl, he pointed out that like the ancient Greeks didn't think about goodness that way either. But like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just a guy who works at a laundromat and I'm being nice to you because I think you're crazy. And he's like, okay, but you need to go to church every day yeah. or else <laughs> my monster will get you. <laughs> Well, and I love to, the, you know, it's not at all racist for the only Hispanic character in the movie to have the line like, I'm a good guy. I've never even been to prison. I would like a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> really? Slowly rolls up his arm. Never been to prison tattoo. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. I keep that one on there for the ladies. <laughs> But again and again, this happens several times in the movie where he'll ask somebody, you know, are you Jesus-y, Jesus, Jesus? And they'll go like, no, no, I, but I'm a good person. And the movie's just like, you're supposed to be sitting at home going, <gasps> you know, like that's that's where we're going. That's the entire plot of this movie. It's not enough to be good. You also have to be Christian about it. Yeah. And then I guess this is where like he reads, it, it, we, we have him reading his Bible and he suddenly remembers the librarian chick. Via a yeah. very intrusive flashback that seems to frighten the actor. <laughs> <laughs> like they did the VO in the same room as him and he was like, oh, fuck, guys, you didn't tell me you were doing VO. <laughs> it's not why, Jesus. that's not how this is usually done, folks. <laughs> oh, I feel like that girl in 1989. Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just sneak up on someone like that the way you did Jeez. in 1989. <laughs> I hear a podcaster did a bunch of well-researched... <laughs> Has a bunch of evidence on that that he'll reveal next week. 
<laughs> now that Donald Trump's guys have given up on the birther question, we have something for him to do. Yeah. <laughs> So now he goes to the university library to see the librarian that Norris told him about right before he got zapped back in time. And I have to say, I have kind of a thing for librarians, and this actress uh, was not helping to dissuade that, you know? Yeah. Mm. Um, she looks is- like her wanted poster should be titled, Holding Up Well for 50. <laughs> <laughs> she gets no winks on her Christian Mingle page. She just opens it up every night. Ah, <sighs> wow, I guess there's less people on this site than I thought. I hope... <laughs> She was in Scanners, by the way. I looked her up on IMDb. She was, really? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, she looks here like she was time traveling from the 1980s, and he yeah. was just coming <laughs> from the 1890s. They were like, oh, get out of here. Cool. All right. <laughs> yeah, right. We're both doing that. Nice. <laughs> to be fair, she time traveled forward but got stuck in a Maybelline vat for 30 days and 30 nights <laughs> and had to apply her way out, so... All I have is an appearance notice. Uh, oh, she's a Christian, and I so want to spank that out of her. So, mm-hmm. fuck you guys. This and her is, you know, trapezoid-shaped nice. body with shoulders. <laughs> she looks like a Picasso painting <laughs> of a man. <laughs> oh, okay. I want to fuck those two, I guess. So, yeah. No, that's fair. That's if they're cool. a hot librarian. Sure. So, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. And, and so, basically, like, he's showing up to this librarian to complain that the church he went to wasn't enthusiastic enough. I so wanted him to go to a black church next, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we don't get bla- that. Just like jumping around, screaming, people catching the Holy Spirit. All right, I want somewhere in the middle. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> and then she gets she gets like paged by her secretary. Her secretary is like, uh, the state is on line one. And he's like, mm, I notice you have a person in your box. Is it? Is it a genie? There's a genie here. All right. I'm catching on. Genie boxes. Just takes out a piece of paper, writes down genie boxes, slowly puts it back into his pocket. Which would actually be more curiosity than this character ever shows as a scientist. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and, and uh, you know, so we get the hilarious he thinks the phone is a person thing or whatever. And she invites him to have lunch with him sometimes so that we can revisit this character. Um, and then the, this is where we get this not at all racist scene. Scene, uh, where he runs into the black dude, um, the the doorman. I was so sure he was going to call this guy boy and get his ass kicked. <laughs> I was so I would have bet I would have bet life changing amounts of money that he goes up and is like boy. I say boy. I notice my <laughs> shoes need a shine, and the guy's like, oh, you're gonna fall, you're gonna fall asleep with me on top of you, Mister. <laughs> you're gonna feel like it's 1989, and I'm a Cristiano brother. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> he did that one at no illusions. <laughs> if we spread it out, I think the lawsuit is going to be a little easier on both of us. That's what the Cristiano brothers said. <laughs> <laughs> Listen quick while we're still here. That's what Eli's trying to say, folks. So, and then while he's Andrew's having, having such a bad Tuesday. <laughs> So, so he, the the reason we have this scene though is so that we can see, like, as he's asking this guy uh, where a good restaurant is, we see him hitting on some chick, and Russell is offended, and so am I because he's this asshole just yelling at some poor girl trying to walk by. But of course, Russell is offended for entirely the wrong reason. Excuse me, sir, <laughs> buy her first. <laughs> He's grabbing the back of the guy's skull. Do you feel these dimples? That's why you're doing this. That's why you're having trouble relating to women properly. Slaps him with a glove. <laughs> so, and this is where he's like, he's like, your wife would not appreciate you uh, uh, saying such rude things to that woman or whatever. And he's like, oh, I'm divorced. And that's where we're going to go with this. Like, this is all about like him learning that 50% of marriages end in divorce today. Ooh. Yeah, and I wrote, man, this world where people get out of unhappy relationships is terrible, Awful. terrible, I say. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so now he goes to this uh, this burger joint to mope over the lack of marital <laughs> sanctity in the world today. Yeah, and the service is so rude in this modern age where everyone has enough food and not milk legs. <laughs> <laughs> and again, we get this over and over again in this movie, and this is so stupid. He's like, uh, he's ordering... Food and she's like anything to drink and he first of all doesn't understand that drink goes with food for some reason and then he asks for tea and everybody's just like tea where the fuck did you come from asshole <laughs> tea is not weird <laughs> no, that we've had tea, drink- teas with a, it's a Boston Tea Party 
It's so we've had tea forever. <laughs> we've had multiple kinds of tea. I think she would blow the fuck out of his mind with how many different kinds of tea she had. <laughs> right, exactly. She'd be like, "What do you want? Green tea, ginger tea, lemon tea?" And he'd be like, "Holy fucking shit! Are you the queen?" <laughs> right. it's so ridiculous it's like crocodile dundee going to an alligator swamp instead of and he's yeah, right. baffled by america because <laughs> what so and of course this scene exists so that he can overhear two uh young two teenage girls talking about going out and being sinful tonight and having alcohol Right. And in, so he turns around and he's like, excuse me, young ladies, you shouldn't be drinking strong alcohol. And I wrote in my notes, women aren't allowed to drink. And that's great. This movie. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted so badly for that girl to punch him. I wanted her to flash him, you know, just to like flash her tits at him real quick. That would have been fucking awesome. Again, crazy billionaire money. That's happening. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then we get that great comedy line at the end where they yell at him to chill out and, and then they storm out and they don't use any profanity and he goes perhaps you should be the party to chill out oh yeah. i wanted that to follow throughout the movie though like the after credit scene he just walks up to those girls with a pistol and shoots her in the chest <laughs> man <laughs> you know i didn't chilled check. out now <laughs> <laughs> that might be in there we'll have to double check crazy so, billionaire uh, now it's time for the well a movie night with the church group uh, where we get all the hilarity of him trying to figure out how vans work. And this is just so, I guess, okay, so we get him like being overawed at the majesty of the movie theaters. Um, and, but I honestly, I feel like this scene, because they go, they go to the movies and it's like the crowd, the theater is just packed or whatever. And I feel like the Cristiano brothers just filmed this scene so they could see what one of those things looked like full. <laughs> Walked in. This is crazy. Everyone here is under 90. <laughs> wow. That, That's crazy. There's mm-hmm. not three old black women and a, and a podcaster here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's, um, I guess it must be a weird free movie night. So it must, it must be. So, and, and of course, this is where I, and I'm sure that these guys feel like this is the money shot of the film. This is where he rushes out of the theater and yelling, stop the movie. That man just blasphemed in the name of our Lord. And I so wanted the person behind the the, uh, the counter just go, shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> But awesome again crazy billionaire money guys if ever there was a movie that made it worth some philanthropist donating a billion dollars to us this is the movie come on <laughs> come on elon musk we know you listen and we're sorry uber's not doing super well now but it's just a phase we can't wait for the self-driving cars and you can begin our atheist movie empire there you go there you go people are gonna need something to listen to and watch while they're in space you get it. obviously <laughs> So, yeah, so everyone rightly treats him like an insane person. And then we go to this, uh, I guess this is like the after movie social at the church. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like trying to cheer him up. They're like, hey, bud, you all bummed out by the fact that words aren't magic here. <laughs> you bummed out. And he's like, mm-hmm. you want to yeah. take a poop in Mr. Maggie's shoes? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I wrote my notes. Perhaps this midnight cowboy was not the film for us to go see. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to. Okay, so this is where we're going to meet our our villains. Uh, uh, yeah, it, the, the husbands of the the yeah. two ladies that, are, and they look like like diabolical squash players in this scene. <laughs> it's very very strange. They look like they're about to find out that Brandon Fraser's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the wives are hilarious to me, too. They look like Janet and Chrissy from Three's Company. Oh, almost exactly. fuck, they do. They have no idea what decade it is. <laughs> now. Now. They don't know what what right. year it is now. Right, yeah. Usually in a time travel movie, the anachronisms come when you're in a different part of time. Yeah. yeah. In this fucking movie, trouble. they didn't even know now. Amazing. Also, one of them is a science teacher, and he's like, I am a science teacher where I come from. I'm not a space alien. And she's like, hey, you're a stranger who we just learned is terrified of movies. You should come to my room full of children. And he's like, sounds like a good idea to everyone here. So, yeah, right, right, yeah. A completely unvetted stranger that just showed up at your church and acts like an insane person. Might as well have him come to a public school to talk to people about... Well, Jesus, obviously. And by the way, this is the first of many times where this movie like makes the the, the effort to suck its own dick, where it's like, like basically the, the main character sitting there going like, oh, if only all the movies were made by the Cristiano brothers, there would never be any blaspheming in there. Like, just I, I'm just planting that seed now. It will blossom very soon. <laughs> yes. 
So and and then of course, like he tells him, like I work at such and such Bible seminary, and the, the evil squash players wander off to go, like hey, that seminary doesn't exist. Let's get him. <laughs> yeah, right? Why would they be doing this? There's no reason. They're like, let's get to the bottom of this horribly boring plot point, and that's the rest <laughs> of the movie. That's like yes. the driving force behind what's going to happen now. Right. I mean, look, maybe they're reasonably suspicious because this guy is afraid of movies and <laughs> said he's from a thing that doesn't exist anymore. Right. But there's that's not a reason to be like, let's follow him home. You want to break into his hotel, <laughs> as we will do in a couple of scenes? Do you want to break and enter? <laughs> he's like, let's run him through. One of them's a cop, so he's like, why don't you run him through the system down at the station? Yeah, because, no. uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so now we go to him. To, he's at his hotel, and he's looking outside, and he sees kids sinning. Um, and it, it, I love this scene too. Just very brief camera work note. Um, there's these kids like hanging out, smoking cigarettes or whatever on the street corner, and they he reaches down into his uh, pocket for his pocket watch, and the camera follows it. And I so expected him to be jerking off when the camera panned down. <laughs> it's like everything suggested he was about to start stroking it because of the sinful passions that the uh, the kids had arisen in him. But yeah, yeah. anyway, my yeah. note here was <laughs> those children should be dead of scurvy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Mine was that they should be home smoking weed, but you know. Anyway, everybody has to raise their kids their own way. Why are they not working in the mines? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so now we're back to the bad husbands um, who shall lay their plans against him. And they reasonably have a discussion of, hey, this guy is using a per dead person's name and with fake locations. And since we are sane <laughs> grownups in the year 2002 and time travel isn't real, that is suspicious to us. Right. <laughs> It's madness. They're like, all right, well, I know a guy at the CIA and NASA. Maybe I can get a satellite feed of this guy. Well, what the <laughs> fuck do you care? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and like, well, we'll, we'll get there. Okay? But this gets more and more bizarre as the fucking movie goes. But they just establish how, and now, like, let's follow him around and stuff because we have nothing in our tiny little lives. Um, it, but, you know, uh, 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 obviously that'll be important later. So now we get to the high school where he's going to teach a class. You know, this unvetted weird guy from church is going to teach a class in the public school. And I wanted him to start off right at the beginning. Like, why is this class miscegenated? <laughs> that, I, well, he opens with, I cannot talk to you about science. Wait, why am I here? I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. And of course he starts immediately going all Bible on the students. Right. He says the same quote of like, the scripture must match the science. And she very appropriately is like, mm, no, 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 we don't do that because we have a whole <laughs> we're better now. Yeah. But the movie plays it like someone's going to throw acid at him. Like he said the name of Jay. <laughs> <laughs> And look, the teacher reacts appropriately. She takes way too long to shut him up, but she reacts appropriately. She takes him outside. But. When she has to, like, read him the riot act, they can't actually address the real issue because, yes, what he did was way beyond the bounds of anything you're allowed to do in a public school. He says to these fucking public school students, well, if the science disagrees with the Bible, the science is wrong. But they can't say in this movie, well, you can't lie to kids and pretend that the Bible lines up with science. So they have to have her say, you're not allowed to express religious views to students in a school. Yeah. I'm going to have to persecute you into not doing that yeah, anymore. Right. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. I, I need you to sign this paper that says, God is dead. So it's the whole thing. <laughs> they make everyone who walks into the school do it. I don't know why you hadn't filled yours out yet. <laughs> is that Hercules? <laughs> <laughs> Debate this black guy. No, I'm not. <laughs> he's already crying. And he's already crying. You lose. And now we get the bad husbands who have, at this point, literally broken into this character's hotel room to check out his shit. What? Right. I mean, what are we supposed to think is motivating these fucking characters? They're, 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 they're pissed at him for being an asshole about the movie, so they break into his fucking house? Is there a history of time-traveling swindlers coming through this town and the cops <laughs> it's are It's a big out problem in L.A. Looking out it's for a that? big problem in L.A. What <laughs> the fuck? Unbelievable. And then, of course, they find the big clue, right, like where they open his Bible, and there's this really big fakey signature and date from, like, 1865 or whatever from his <laughs> yeah. mom. My my theory, by the way, on this is Captain Steubing, like, fucked their wives and then poofed out of existence. Oh, so maybe okay. they're pissed about that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because, I mean, he was there. Yeah, that mm. makes sense. We need a prequel is what <laughs> <Yeah>. we need. <laughs> well, I, I think it's pretty clear that this movie needs a minute to figure out what the fuck it's doing. So we're going to pause for another quick break. But before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will Russell bother to figure out what we did about the polio? 
Will Paul Rodriguez factor into this movie in any way? Will the hot dog stealing bitch ever get what's coming to her? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the fucktarded conclusion of Time Changers. Hi, it's me again, Andrew Torres. I just listened to the first half and I thought I'd point out, again, just for clarity, that any statements being made about the Cristiano brothers in this show are a joke. Any of them, by any member of the cast, by anyone at all, but especially Eli. They're jokes. Humor. Jokes. Like this one that I'm about to tell. Hey, you ever notice that Tums only come in a roll of 12? Who only needs 12? Probably lawyers for other podcasts, that's who. And now, back to the show. So, Professor Lusions, welcome back. Oh, my God, am I back in 1890? Yes. So, you see what I was talking about? Of course. Well, as you would suspect, I've memorized as much science and mathematics as I can. Now, did you learn about vaccines while you were there? The v- vac- vaccines? Oh, good. Now, we should compare notes to make sure we didn't learn too many things in common, but I have memorized as much medical information as I could. Just think, Anderson. Polio, gone. Scurvy, gone. So many of the world's ills, gone. You are a genius, my good man. Oh, of course. Yeah, you didn't, um, you, so you didn't just spend the whole time being super surprised and upset that people aren't way into Jesus. No, no, of course not. Also, I'm not sure I fully grasp the internal combustion engine, but if I write what I remember now, slowly but surely, I know we shall assemble a hundred years of advance in what will only be a day. D- d- do you go now? Um, yeah, in a second. So wait, oh. it, um, you didn't like give a speech at a church? Or complain about mannequins, maybe? Oh, no. Don't worry, my friend. I wasn't distracted by anything as stupid as that. Yes, the culture was odd, but what kind of monster would focus on that rather than bringing back as much life-saving technology as possible? Right. Totally. Totes my goats. Yeah, so so what did you learn? We must discuss. Oh, <laughs> Tons of stuff. Um, oh, I just gonna, I'm gonna jump into the future real quick. Cause I totally did all that too. I just, uh, but I wanted to remember uh, one thing. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump in real quick. Uh, sure, one second. Sure. Of course. Oh, what a great guy. Okay. Okay. I'm back. Uh, babies don't come out of your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for more breakdown. When we last saw our hero, he was being scolded for trying to indoctrinate school kids with his flagrantly falsifiable biblical nonsense. So now he's going to go commiserate with the librarian lady, and it's going to open with the line, and I simply mentioned the Bible, I meant no harm by it. And for not the first time since we've been doing this, I wrote in my notes, no movie, we saw you, why would you lie about what happened two scenes ago? I can rewind and you know this. <laughs> well, what's incredible about this is, like, the amount of lies they have to tell slash not addressing the things that he says to right. sort of get away with it. Because there's this great moment where he goes, well, uh, and they've banned prayer from schools, and she's like, mm, I can't say yes, because they haven't, but... <laughs> but- it's no longer mandatory, so I can see what he means. They don't, they don't <laughs> pussyfoot around about that lie at all. She, she literally says, we can't teach the Bible or pray in school anymore. Mm-hmm. That both of those things are wrong as fuck. Yeah, took the Bible as literature in school, and I went to school, you know, pretty close to when this movie was made. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, exactly. And, and yeah, and of course you can fucking pray in school. What you can't do is force kids to pray. But of uh. course the movie can't really bitch about that, which is what they're really upset about, because even they would recognize how bad they would be. These, keep in mind, these are people who are perfectly okay making a movie where they don't even address the polio thing while they're back in time or in the future and shit. But even they can't get around like having somebody upset that they can't like force kids to be Christian. <laughs> Yeah. And again, it's so amazing because this entire, this entire scene is just a series of him pretending not to understand and her being like, totally, totally, <laughs> that's what happened. It's weird how my morality and the morality of someone from a hundred years ago matches up. Ooh, I'm a monster. I'm a monster. Oh, I just figured it out. I'm a monster. Can we stop making the movie and can I change my whole life? Nope. Nope. All right. Keep rolling. 
So and and what's what, what I love is again they have to have this conversation about how people think it's enough to just be a good person without being a Christian. Mm-hmm. You know, again, she has to be like, what's wor- the worst thing is, is that people aren't any worse, morally speaking, without Jesus. And that's bad because that tricks them into believing that they don't need Jesus to be a good person. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And then she confesses that she used to do porn, but her asshole blew out. Right? That's what that <laughs> Very clearly. About. There is no other way to interpret that. All she says, she's like, I was in, in the movie industry. And we're like, yeah, we know. We know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She looks like a retired 80s porn star named Maxine Hedrum. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> please don't give me a Jesus pamphlet and a website called The New Drug. Just please, I get it. You didn't have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we learned that she quit her sinful job in the movie industry because her friend found Jesus. Um, and, and now, that because of that awesome thing, she works in a library and has an impotent husband. <laughs> that, that's what we learn right now. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And she also has this way protest too much moment where she's like, yeah, my friend was like, hey, you want to swap out life for Jesus? And I was like, let me get a bite of that Kit Kat bar. Oh, oh, and, and, and by the way, my life is super meaningful now. Yeah. Super meaningful. <laughs> Turns to camera. Super meaningful, Alan. Super meaningful. Right. Yeah. She said, yeah, she says, no, no, I love being a librarian because it gives me so many chances to push my religion on people. Um, but this is where the movie really starts like winking at itself, you know, where it's, it's like, she's like, you know, I believe that secular entertainment is one of the biggest tools that Satan uses to mislead people. If only all the movies were made by the Cristiano brothers. She might as well say that in the really? fucking script. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. Really, really, that is what she says. Christian movies are the best. Turn to camera. Wink. Yeah, I just, right. I wanted like Cristianobrothers.com to flash across the screen. <laughs> She's right, you know. Jesus yeah. was not a Jew. dot org flashes across the screen. <laughs> yeah. We raped a girl in nineteen eighty nine. Flashes across the screen. Do not go to that website. Do not. <laughs> I mean, go to that website, but show it to your kids right away. Like, type it in. Show it to your kids. So yeah, so she teaches him that like Satan tricked Hollywood into not making movies all about Jesus anymore, and that's why people use swear words. Right. And she's like, "Well, when movies started out, it was all super Christian." And I wrote in my notes, "Citation needed." I've seen some old porn, some old <laughs> porn. Right. Like pretty much the moment we catch anything in a new form of technology, we're like, "Quick, get people fucking in front of that." <laughs> <laughs> Their new way to get people doing it. I want it on it. That new medium now. And, and also, they're lamenting that, like, movies aren't, like, the way they were when we first started movies. Like, only good stuff like Birth of a Nation was allowed on screen back then. Really? That's right. that's the message you're going to... Okay. <laughs> this is also where we get the line that fear is the beginning of wisdom. And I wrote in my notes, math, motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> So now we get uh, visitation night at the church, but we, we we open that up. But first, we have to, I guess, cut over to the evil uh, squash husbands plotting some more. <laughs> yeah, they. <laughs> so crazy. They're doing like late night detecting. They're like smoking cigarettes, like hard boiled detecting. And they found records about all the people from the Grace Bible Seminary somewhere on the internet. I don't know. Their theory is that Russell stole the identity of. A professor Carlisle well, from the United States. What? What? Well, that and that's the fucked up thing about this. This is how little they thought this through, right? Because okay, if you think that it, because you're right, it would be suspicious if you found out that this guy is pretending to be this person from the 1890s and not telling you who he really is. But you wouldn't then go examine the person from the 1890s he's pretending to be. No, that's right. completely irrelevant. <laughs> Let's make sure he's not still alive. That's what I think. That's the <laughs> right. first step in detectiving. <laughs> And then they, this is a literal line too. One of them's like, okay, well, he stole the identity of professor in the 1890s, but what's his agenda? Why would he do that? And I just wrote, I'm not even going to wait for a response. I'm going to go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll just jingle my own keys. Thank you wow. very much. I got these ones. That's okay. I'll take care of it. There's also this <laughs> fantastic moment where like, yes, he's supposed to have stolen the idea of this professor, but like at no, they, they, they're like, Hey, is the pastor ready? And he's like, Oh, he's ready. Yeah. Yeah. So we're supposed to think that some sort of trap is about to be sprung, but <laughs> spoiler alert, there is no trap. No, it, this we're is going so to fucking learn weird. That but in a moment, 
they refer to this. <laughs> they, they, they like presage this the, the the plan that they've got to get him a couple of times here. And when we get there, yeah, there's <laughs> there's absolutely nothing. They're like, well, we could arrest him for not being from the 1890s, but 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 Tom go or one of them goes like, oh, I have a better idea. Dun dun dun. This motherfucker's gonna try and vote in the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> so I got all those times right. <laughs> And so now we get him going door to door to sell the church um, with with some dude. Fat Andy Dalton. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and of course, before they go into the house, he's, the guy's like, oh, well, here on this card that these people filled out, it says they're very interested in going to our church. So this should be easy. He goes, should we pray before we enter? And the Christian guy is like, fuck prayer. Well, he's like. Hey, we prayed back at the church. We're probably fine. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Do you not pray before you enter every building like a fucking harpy? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I also need to be invited in and make sure there's no garlic in there. Oh, that's vampires. (laughs) I'm sorry. Wrong myth. Wrong myths. Now, and I I get that they were making a point with this, uh, because we're going to get a disrespectful kid here who's like won't turn down the TV or whatever. But they let this linger for quite a while where we're watching this scene and we've got these characters talking, but the TV is on so loud in the background that you can barely make out what they're saying. And they Mm -hmm. let that run for like a minute and a half for us. Yeah. The kid won't turn down the TV. The kid won't turn down the TV. And finally, he walks over to the kid and I wrote in my notes, please walk over and be like, William. Because his name is William. I wanted to be like, William, I will fuck you sideways. <laughs> Turn off that goddamn television. You hear me, William? I'll wear you like a goddamn glove, William. <laughs> like a fucking glove. Where were you in 1989, William? <laughs> well, if you had read enough papers at that time, you would know that the people involved in this movie <laughs> know exactly how to make someone your age behave themselves. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus. But I love no. that the victim just became a child, though. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so yeah, but, but, but what's really happening here is that he's got to go over there to talk to the kid so he can realize that the kid is watching apparently porn for women. Um, (laughs) it's it's, it's just a couple about to kiss in like a shitty romantic comedy. uh, Yeah, right, right, exactly. And he sees this couple kissing on TV and he's like, how dare this married couple let a children see them kissing? And the kid goes, they're not married. And then he really freaks the fuck out. And it's so funny. Like, it reacts like if I saw if on that screen was like a woman about to suck a dick, I would be <laughs> less alarmed. I might be like, hey, champ, I don't think we should be watching that. But I wouldn't be like, oh, I must block here. Let me see. here. I will crush myself on top of this television. Rather I die than you see this. <laughs> So yeah, he freaks the fuck out, and then he goes back to the hotel to really check out this whole TV thing. And I honestly expected the next scene to just be him tying a noose and carving, you know, fucking Carlisle was here onto a rafter or something. Well, but it's uh, so good because he watches TV and we see it reflected on his face, and he's like, "Oh!" And it really, I just want of if I could have anything, I just want someone to intercut those right. like Vietnam flashbacks <laughs> in with him watching the TV. Because that's exact. You look. It looks like he's having flashbacks, and I wrote in my notes. Oh, Carlisle, don't worry about it, man. Most of that is just salt water and cornstarch being flicked off a paintbrush. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> She's fine, dude. Really, she is. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I love it. Yeah, no, that that's what I would intercut. It's just the sounds of uh, people fucking on the on the TV as as we watched them. But yeah, but no, he has to pray for forgiveness from Jesus for the Paris Hilton burger commercial or whatever. Um, and and at this point, okay. Whatever minor, ridiculously stupid stakes this movie had are gone. He now agrees with Norris. He agrees with Captain Steubing. He can go back and nothing has to happen. Like, like we have fixed even that one little stupid thing that we were supposed to give a shit about. And there's still like a half hour of this goddamn movie. So now we go to the we go back to the husbands uh, where you know the way they're on the phone and the one's guy's like, "Have you seen anything that would remotely justify the bizarre level of interest that we've randomly taken in this guy?" And the other guy's like, "Nope, not a nope. goddamn yeah. thing." He acts like a time traveler. Can I throw that out there, man? You keep saying that. I'm just saying. I feel like if someone were watching, I would communicate that I'm suspicious of him being a time traveler. Yeah. <laughs> There's all this weird stuff, like he's from 89. We had a case just like this back in 85. Dude almost fucked his mom. <laughs> tragic stuff. <laughs> tragic, <laughs> tragic stuff. And literally, one of the evil squash guys trailed Russell through town. What? To, to, I, to, I don't know. To, to look at him 
marvel over water and stuff. They might as well be analyzing his bulk metadata from the 1890s. It's so stupid. <laughs> right. And then, and of course, this is where we get another allusion to the plan where it's like, you know, he's like, well, have you enacted the plan? He's like, yeah, it's all set up with Pastor Burton. And they go like, I think it's time we had a little talk with Mr. Carlisle before the service. And I'm like, wait, no, then you think before the service is the time to have a little talk with Mr. Carlisle? That sentence doesn't... Let's those talk words with him don't. before and after. <laughs> and now text him <laughs> what does now mean we've been having a lot of trouble <laughs> yeah, with that today right. <laughs> slowly looks at his hand and there's just a, it's just written on his hand now equals now and he's like mm, <laughs> go on <laughs> so now russell heads back to to go meet with his librarian cougar but unfortunately she's gone until friday and he'll be gone on wednesday um, and I guess the this is the whole reason for this goddamn scene. So he turns around and he sees this display that says, travel back in time with our new microfiche spectacular yeah. about this town, but way back in 1890. Carlisle, learn how you die here yeah, right. today. Yes, exactly. Also, can we talk about, he goes up to the librarian and he's like, uh, is Miss Bain here? And she's like, no, I'm sorry. She had to go. And he's like, can you tell her? And then he recites like a 95 line letter. And she very, cause I've been a personal assistant and she very clearly does that. Like, mm-hmm, I'll tell her you said hi. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I'm, I'm remembering your message. I'm remembering your message and memorized. Yep. I'll remember yep, there it we forever. Go. So, and, and of course, we, so he's going to get on this computer to check out old articles so that he can be tempted to learn about his own future. But first, of course, we have to establish how he knows how to use a computer. So we get this character named Greg. Oh, oh. Greg is my favorite. He's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> You're talking about Sugar Ray, who helps yeah. him with the microfiche, who works at oh, this library. God. He looks cool. like he's, he's, he looks like he's opened and closed a failed jazz skateboard emporium <laughs> so many times. I've seen those glasses, those tiny sunglasses drawn yeah, uh-huh. on a cartoon character. I've never seen them on a <laughs> Well, and he clearly wants to suck a few wine coolers out of that dude's beard. Like, there's clearly some sexual tension in this scene. Um, and, yeah, so so he finally learns to use the computer, and the guy's like, yeah, just type in the name of any person whose past you want to learn about right there. So he types in his own name, and then he like holds his finger over the return key like a goddamn sniper, bad, a bad guy sniper in an action movie or whatever. And I, I really wanted Christopher Lloyd to just burst in here again, just slap the keyboard out of his hand, diving. <laughs> no money! It's not yeah. for us to go! <laughs> also, I, a little behind-the-scenes thing, but as we mentioned occasionally on these shows, I don't know how to spell it all, and this is the first time he spells Carlisle on the screen, and I was yeah. like, is that how you spell Carlisle? <laughs> Carsical? <laughs> Cancer cycle? <laughs> Jesus, spelling's hard. Because throughout this, Carlisle for me is C-A-R-L-Y-L-E. That's how I've spelled Carlisle throughout my notes. And his is just like, there's 26 letters. Honest, I didn't even read it. I didn't recognize that he was looking himself up because I was like, who's Carsical? <laughs> What's that curly-shaped little thing <laughs> next to the end of the word? Carlisle comma? Is that a word? I don't know what that is. <laughs> crazy shit over here so yeah but but now he he starts to look himself up but then he thinks better of it which means nothing happened in that scene at all at all so par for the course on this fucking movie so now he's heading into church and this is where the the squash husbands are gonna like have their talk with him Right. And they're basically like, so we know all about your little experiment. And he's like, gentlemen, I don't know why you hate Jesus, but I am not an alien or a criminal. <laughs> not yeah. an alien or a criminal. All <laughs> right. Excuse me. <laughs> Makes no sense. Yeah. They like drop some names from the 1800s that he's supposed to know. And yeah. then they like uh-huh. smile and wink at each other. He's, I mean, w- what? If they did believe he's a time traveler, what was just accomplished? Right. What, how, they rattled and if they him? didn't believe he was a time traveler, right. even less was right. accomplished. Yeah. Why would this even rattle the, is he worried they're gonna like, think he's from a time machine invented in the 1800s that hasn't been created since? Nothing matters here. No. Zero stakes no. in this movie. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and again, if they didn't so strongly suspect him of being a time traveler, if they actually thought that he just picked some old guy's name to use, would they think that that 
guy would also know the people who were the co-workers of the character that he stole. Anyway, yeah, makes <laughs> no goddamn sense. So now it's time for Wednesday, Wednesday night service, which is fucking packed, apparently. And wouldn't you know it, the preacher calls on Russell to do a problem on the blackboard or whatever. This is the plan, right, that the, the squash husbands came up with to, to, to talk the preacher into asking Russell to deliver a sermon. Yeah, I would like to invite a stranger to come up here and do the sermon today. Uh, this is part of a plan trap, apparently. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. <laughs> Which and and clearly Russell like knew it was coming and came prepared or whatever and d- but despite this the evil husbands for the, throughout this entire scene are going to just stand at the back of the church with their arms folded like winking at each other and like ah oh, we got him good why why well, why, why, no, why would they, they do that what if he they gets done? up nothing and he's like look I have no idea why this is happening um I'm not sure I was chosen uh it would be fair to say I'm a time traveler. <laughs> he's like i come from a simpler time i'm a simple caveman bible scholar no yeah. shut up there's also this incredible moment he goes look my pro- my pl- the where i'm from has problems too like a huge infant mortality rate <laughs> uh, but you guys swear so like listen i got some shit to say <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so yeah let me tell you how to do it right um and 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 right yeah and and of course this is where he like throws out that like surely this must be the end times so yes 2002 is the end times this movie yeah and we also get like a 20 minute pan shot of just horribly ugly people in this church <laughs> everyone looks like they just spent like a bunch of time more than they expected shopping at walmart and they're kind of pissed <laughs> And, yeah, exa- and the whole crux of this is don't funk with the Lord's heart. Um, <laughs> and and then he wraps up with, look, sorry to be a downer, but we're all going to live forever. And the infinitely larger percentage of that will be either burning in fire or walking around with harps talking to grandma. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> drop the mic. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, let me no. let, warn you that the devil hides in your radio, and then I'm yeah. off. So turn your ass out for Jesus. But <laughs> well, turn your ass out for Jesus. For a vi- that's why. <laughs> Not just turn your ass out. Yeah, so this was apparently the plan, and I wanted so bad for one of the husbands in the back to go, gotcha, motherfucker! <laughs> right. We have no idea what they expected to happen here. Like, he was going to get up there and go, uh, I just want to tell you guys I'm a time traveler. Fuck! Oh, oh shit. they got me. Ah. Him, as he was stepping off stage, he steps into a bear trap, just, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and got him. And they just put him in the people zoo. <laughs> Sting operation. There's a camera there and there. No, nothing happened. Yeah, Chris right, Hansen exactly. comes out. Come on, have a seat. Now, do you know what time you're from? Do you know what time you're from? <laughs> he looks at his hand. Now <laughs> equals now. Do you know what nope. year the girl said she was from? Hmm? She said she was from 1989. Oh, wrong people. I'm looking for the directors. Looking for the directors. <laughs> So now I guess now it's time for it because it was Wednesday night and that's what time they established he had to be back in the alley to go back to the past or whatever. So, but before he can go back in time, he has to go say goodbye to Eddie. Remember Eddie who was in this room movie for no goddamn reason? <sighs> yes. Ah, uh, Eddie. So he goes to give Eddie a Bible and it's a Spanish Bible because Eddie is brownish. Keep in mind, he has no reason to believe that Eddie speaks Spanish at, to, at this point in the movie. Yeah. Also, he has an amazing moment. He goes, Eddie, I-, I want you to have my clothes. And Eddie's like, no, no, thanks, man. You very clearly came in that. And there's a sexual thing about me wearing it. And, <laughs> and he's like, well, then give it to someone who needs it. Yeah, because he's such a good guy. Yeah, right. exactly. And this is where I was hoping he'd forget to change suits because you can't bring stuff back. And he'd just go back to 1890 naked like the Terminator, like you're saying before. I'm sure that's what Norris was hoping for. Yeah. I'm sure that's this whole plot. Because keep in mind, Norris only has to wait a second. Yeah. Oh, you showed up with clothes on. Well, this was a waste. How was the future? <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. I spent most of it yelling at people about the same stuff I could yell at people about today. Yeah, right. That we've always been yelling at people about. <laughs> kind of be a little silly, though, because we're going to tell people that the world will end any minute, and now we know they got at least a 100 years. Yeah, right. You motherfuckers are fine. Don't prepare for shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, now he's got to, like, before he leaves, he's got to, like, convert Paul Rodriguez to Christianity. So he starts to leave, and then he's like, no, you know what I need to tell you? The, the, the end times are coming. Now, up to this moment... This character, Paul Rodriguez's character, has acted like this is just some crazy person, right? 
But what convinces him he's not crazy is his end is nigh speech. That's the the right. thing. If you were just drawing a comic and you needed to establish guy is crazy, the thing you would put on his placard is the thing that convinces Eddie that this guy is perfectly sane. Right. Yeah. And, and this is also where he explains that Jesus was the only one that lived a perfect life. And I wrote in my notes, including the time he yelled at that tree, especially the time he yelled at that tree. <laughs> that tree was asking for it. <laughs> Look, should five minutes of Jesus's life ruin the rest of his legacy? No. So, yeah. And so, but I guess what Eddie really needed was for somebody to read him the last panel of a chick track to this whole time because he's going like he says the the character goes like wow nobody's ever explained it to me that that way before you know the exact same way that every christian always fucking explains their religion word for word no one's ever done that and Bullshit. now i'm really gonna read this book before <laughs> i wasn't but now i'm gonna read this <laughs> yeah. really long boring genealogy <laughs> right <laughs> trust me yeah, exactly. Genesis. We got to see that he's really reading it. So as, as he, exactly. Speak Bible, chapter one. Great. <laughs> Thank you. So now he's he's walking to the alley, but the squash husbands are following right behind him. Yeah. Music note here. Hurry, Watson. Moriarty's getting away. Yeah, right. <laughs> Again, the, the music takes itself so seriously in this. And so do the guys. They're like proceeding with caution around corners to like follow, he's going like to shoot him. Right. Like, what the fuck? It's like the world's worst Scooby Doo episode. Literally, like he hides behind a corner and like they're gone, yeah. and he pops out, and then they pop out, and it's like bang, 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 bang. You can just <laughs> grown ups know you can just turn around and be like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> um, following you. No, this literally, we were one step away from him ending up in a hallway with a lot of doors and popping out of them randomly. Yeah, we almost <laughs> went there. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I wrote my notes. Hey, like, at first, when this scene first started, I was like, what is Russell afraid that they're going to do? But then I'm like, wait, what are they going to do? Because these two guys look like they have a gimp. <laughs> like, they own a man that's in a box somewhere. Yeah. So, so he, I guess he can't outfox him, so they catch up with him in the alley so that we can have this final showdown between these two characters whose motivation has never been remotely established. Well, they're going to arrest him for identity theft of an 1890s professor. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> like, like you do <laughs> when you're a cop. And I love, okay, so, and this is where the movie, I guess, thought it was getting clever or something. Because, okay, so he's he's like, you know, the cops are like, well, I'm going to arrest you unless you tell me what's going on right now. And he thinks about it. And then he, he like he has this like obvious like light bulb goes off moment. And he's like, I I'm here because Jesus is coming back to Earth right this very moment. <laughs> what's this cartoon graphic that popped up over my head? I'm so confused by this. <laughs> right. uh, look, these guys will totally believe me if I say I'm a messenger from Jesus. It's the perfect ruse. Everyone falls for that one. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> and by the way, lying is a sin. He's going to go to hell for that. And then he gets zaptured away, apparently. Yeah. And I, I feel like the entire movie existed... Just so that the fucking characters could throw down that next line. Yeah. Did we just miss the rapture? Oh, yeah. They thought of this scene and made a feature length movie exactly. to build up to this. <laughs> exactly. To build up to this hilarious goddamn line with the two squash husbands after he disappears. And if you think about how far they, over their shoulder to scratch their ass they had to go to get here. Keep in mind, like, he was making an excuse to disappear. Yeah. He didn't. You don't have to. Like, he, he was going to disappear one way or the other. He doesn't... He could have just been like, okay, I'll tell you. It all started back on Tuesday when... Zoop. And then he disappeared. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. It's not like... It's not like at the end of Django where he has to figure out how to get away from the fucking slave traders or whatever and get back to his wife or anything. And he, he comes up with a clever ruse. He just starts lying to them and they kind of half-ass believe him or whatever and then he, yeah right it's um, amazing how bad these guys and that are is the only making. way which this movie is different from Django Unchained <laughs> <laughs> the end don't you forget about me so not quite because we have to we have to wrap up the whole uh, the whole plot line with Norris so now he's back in 1890 his first observation he runs up to him and he's like, you're right, Norris, there's not enough Jesus. He's not like, can you believe those fucking cars and computers and shit and cell phones and the medicine? No, his fucking, re his first observation is, yeah, they sure didn't have enough Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, 
man, they so didn't have enough Jesus. Do you think maybe the world ends in 2001? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> wink at camera. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks, prophetization machine that happens to use time. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the, the 1890s would be better than now. That is the goddamn movie's message. Um, but yeah, but he asks him at the end, he's like, have you ever saw, uh, tried to see how far into the future you could go to see, you know, when the rapture was? And Captain Stupid's like, no, because that would be stupid. I mean, even when the rapture was, that wouldn't stop time right <laughs> you, you just be does time end to... after the rap like the actual progression of time uh yeah i think so i think so uh, yeah because look at me i understand very little about time <laughs> very little it checks his other hand it's just run on there time equals and then a clock face yeah. Yeah. right right yeah mm. now equals time go um, on so now we're uh, now we go back to the league of extraordinary gentlemen uh because apparently he's revised his manuscript I'd love to know when he fucking did this, because apparently it's supposed to be the next day, but okay. Right. He says, please excuse my tardiness, and I guess that was okay to say because it was 1890, but like, not cool, not cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this moment, too. Okay, so he they go like, because originally he had the title of his book was Our Changing Times. So the guy goes, hey, I noticed you changed the title from Our Changing Times to Time Changer. Why would you do that? And and, again, and he throws out the line, well, I think it's important that we change our, our times rather than letting our time change us or whatever, something like that. But anyway, the way to do that with the, the, the name change of the book is not Our Changing Times to Time Changer. It's Our Changing Times to Changing Our Time. And those assholes couldn't think of that. Nope. These fucking idiots, it's just like got a silver fucking platter for them and they couldn't grab it, apparently. Now is not now is now is time. <laughs> Notice you changed the title of your book to Jesus is the only thing that matters, dot, 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 <laughs> the only thing. You hear me, Samantha from 2002, you hot dog stealing bitch? <laughs> So speaking of which, now now we get him like happening across Marble Boy. Now you'll remember, recall at the beginning of the movie, the kid stole the marbles, and this character found him and said, "Hey, it's very bad to steal marbles." Now he's going to go correct the fact that he didn't add because Jesus says so. Right. Oh yeah, wrap the shit out of that plot. Yeah. Has anyone uh, ever explained to you who Jesus is? And the kid's like, "Nope, it's 1890. The church has no power in the United no, States. No, not at all." <laughs> Go back, and, and you know what that means? It means he has to go back further in time to when the church was really in power. I get, and, and also, like, this is just some kid. It's not, he, we're not, we haven't established that he knows this kid. Didn't even know the kid's name at the beginning of the movie. So like, he has no idea if this kid's Jewish. There were a lot of them around before 1930. This movie completely ignores that. That's true. Allegedly. <laughs> 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 and apparently we've not yet suffered enough because now we've got to go back to the time machine mm -hmm. where the Norris is sending the Bible into the future like an apocalyptic dipstick. This is what's so amazing. He's trying to. What we yeah. see him doing is like, <laughs> all right, let's try the year 3000. It <laughs> no. uh, didn't work. Let's try the year 2090. <laughs> no, nope. did yeah. not work. And what we're supposed to take from this is that time ends sometime before the year 2080, <laughs> right. not you ran out of sun juice. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason this time machine could not be working is because there is no future beyond 2002. I wanted to try to zap the Bible back once and find out that there's more than 6,000 years of history also. <laughs> uh, like, no, 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 it's broken. It's broken. It's fine. It's weird. Machine must be broken. It went to 6,002, but that would yeah, just be... No, no. Oh, man. Did I just send God the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> just hanging out, bouncing on a cross ball against nothingness, being like, oh, <laughs> someone sent me my book. Awesome. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Um, and, and also, I, I love... Did you? Did either of you guys watch the credits on this? Yeah, where they played some of the audio from yes. the movie over the credits. Yes, that is the weirdest <laughs> decision I have ever witnessed in credits. They're yeah, not well, outtakes, though. They're intakes. No. Yeah. They just played intakes during the credits. That's how much this movie sucks its own dick. Is that it's right. like? See, notice how prophetic the beginning of our movie was to the end of our movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I mean, look, I get it. These people believe in the New Testament. It's like, yeah, you read the bo old book and you matched up your new book. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> Unfucking real. So, all right, yeah, moral of the story, people are getting better at being moral, but worse at being Christian, and that shit needs to change. Is that it? Is that the moral that we're supposed to walk away with? 
Mm-hmm. Pretty sure. Or or damn, do I miss the rickets? It's one yeah. or the other. Well, obviously, we can't risk applying stars to this movie for fear that the stellar radiation will overload the chrono transistor diode circuit. So rather than using a numeric rating system, I'll simply ask you this. What is the dumbest use of a time machine you can think of that would still be smarter than the use we see for it in this movie? Hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, long car trips or waiting for the conditioner to work? <laughs> like, hmm, yeah. Speed some stuff up. Uh, I'm going to go with going back in time to accuse yourself of farting. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Yeah, it was. I hate me. <laughs> oh, shit. And, well, that does it for our review of Time Changer. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we still need to tickle your tummy over next week's show. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Well, we decided to give Andrew two hard weeks in a row, so we're watching <laughs> that. <laughs> just in case this week doesn't get us sued. Yes, we are. Andrew Wakefield's anti-vaccine documentary. Yeah. About how oh. he raped a girl in 1989. <laughs> <also>. <laughs> he was right there with Cristiano's. All oh, that I can't is completely wait to get a real. Cease and desist letter from his mom. <laughs> <laughs> I will frame that. Please, Andrew. Please, Andrew. I've, Please I've send been... me a letter. <laughs> now, I got to say, I've been looking into this one because honestly, the anti vaccine movement pisses me off as much as religion. I've done a lot. I mean, this is this is a real big passion for me. So I've been dying to rip this to fucking shreds as soon as I heard that it was going to eventually exist. So, oh, yeah. I've really been looking forward to next week. Hope you are, too. So for that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 58 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free edition of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy the show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptic Crowd, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes to this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work harder earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. <laughs> Thanks to Satan and his secular morality scheme, the end times happened in 2008. <laughs> also 2012 yeah. and 2014 <laughs> and after Obergefell in 2015 yeah, that's, that's and good. Jade Helm <laughs> and now and now Norris went on to murder Sarah Connor <laughs> the Cristiano brothers raped a girl in 1989 <laughs> wink <laughs> wink to everything we said. Dun, 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 wink. Marty There's lots of winks everywhere. They're gonna get raped by the Cristiano brothers. Everything Eli said was sarcastic today. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2016. All rights reserved.